Recently I've been talking about Touch Designer to some friends and some of them are quite interested and asked me if I could put together a video to help them get started. And here it is. I'm calling it a quick start guide because I want to try to keep it quick and practical, but we can start slowly and then pick up the pace. There's quite a lot to cover, so let's get straight to it. I'll assume you already visited derivative.ca, downloaded Touch Designer and installed it. I'm on Windows, but if you're on a Mac, you should be able to follow without a problem. When you open it, you should see something like this. It might seem like a lot at first, so let's simplify things here. On the left hand side, let's close the palette and to close the parameters menu on the right hand side, press P on the keyboard. This is the network editor and in the middle we have the default example, which is quite useful, but is not what we're going to see in the video. So right click and drag to box select everything and press delete. Now we have a blank canvas where we can start our own network. The network is made out of nodes, which in Touch Designer are called operators. And to open the menu of operators, we can just double click anywhere on the screen. These are the different families of operators. They're color coded and organized by tabs. But instead of explaining what each of them are now, we're just going to pick one to start with and get back to the others later. I want to start with a SOP, which stands for Surface Operator. Here's where we find all things 3D like primitives, polygons, vertices, points, etc. And we're going to start with a simple box. So click on box and then click once again to drop it. Here's our first operator. It is a box itself and it has a window inside called Viewer which contains our 3D box. We can interact with the viewer by clicking on this cross on the bottom right and activate it. Then we can left click and drag to rotate, right click and drag to pan and middle click and drag to zoom in and out. This is all good for our first operator, so let's add one more. And a different way of opening the operator's menu is by pressing tab on the keyboard. And this time we're after the twist sop. If you're having trouble finding it in this list, you can just start typing and Touch Designer will highlight it for you. When we drop it, we see that there's an error. Let's see what it says. Not enough sources specified. This means that the twist sop doesn't do much, or in fact it doesn't do anything if it doesn't have a source or an input. Everything in Touch Designer is based on input and output, and we read from left to right. So the input slot is on the left of the operator, and the output slot on the right. If we want to specify a source for the twist sop, we click on the output of the box and connect it to the input of the twist. Now we can see that the error is gone, but we don't see much of a twist yet. We need to tweak some parameters. And for that, we need to bring back the parameters menu, which we switched off at the beginning. So just press P on your keyboard. These are all the parameters of the twist sop. We can adjust them and see the result in the viewer. This is a very powerful thing about Touch Designer. It doesn't matter how big our network gets, we can still see what's happening on every step of the way. Another very powerful thing is that changes made to this side of the network will propagate downstream. For example, let's say we wanted to swap the box by another shape. Press tab, type sphere and hit enter. Now we can change the connection and replace the box by a sphere. The twist operator is still working but it is a bit harder to see that on a sphere. It would be helpful to see the wireframes and we can do that by activating the viewer and pressing W on the keyboard. If we want some more options like the wireframe, you can right click on the viewer while it's active and there are a few more options. Right, let's have a look at some other SOPs, uh, something other than primitives, like a text SOP. This gives us text in 3D. 
we can see that the letters have no depth. If we want to give them depth, we need to extrude them. And we can do that with an extrude sop. I'll show you a different way of dropping an operator. You can click on the output to get the connector, then press tab. Then let's find the extrude sop. And when we drop it, it comes already connected. And here is our extruded text. We can obviously play with the values and change the depth scale, but let's look at something else. Under the extrude tab, we see a parameter called source group, which at the moment is empty. This means that the extrude is transforming all of the vertices provided as input. Let's say we wanted to extrude some letters, but not others. We would need to provide a group, and we can do that with a group sop. And I'll show you yet another way of adding an operator. Let's drag this over here to make some space, and then hover over the connector until it's highlighted, and then right click and insert operator. Now find the group sop, and it comes already connected with both input and output. Next, we want to create a group. So under the Create tab, let's switch on Number. And we have this option here, Transfer Selection to Pattern. But transfer selection from where? If we want to provide a selection, we need to right-click on the Group SOP and then Select Geometry. This will open another window with a selection tool, and we can pick just what we want. I'm going to select just the letter A, and then click on Transfer to transfer the selection, and we can close this window. And now if we go back to the extrude SOP and click on the arrow next to source group, there is a new option called group 1. And when we select it, we can see that just the letter A is getting extruded. Now there is a lot more to SOPs than this, but we also want to see other types of operators. So let's leave SOPs for now and drag the network over here. And we want to talk about another family of operators called CHOPS, which stands for Channel Operators. This is where we find our variables, constants, math operations, functions, signals, etc. If you're familiar with programming, you know that often you need to define values to use somewhere else in your code. And in Touch Designer, we can do that with a constant CHOP. Let's say we want to create a constant called delta and give it a value of 0 0.2. And maybe we want another constant called gamma and give it a value of 0 0.5. We can keep adding constants to this list. Now let's say we want to accumulate delta over time. We can do that with a speed chop. In case the name of the chop is not clear on what it does, we can refer to the hint at the bottom, which in this case it says that it converts speed to distance over a time range. And now we see the value of delta adding up over time. But the speed chop is also affecting gamma, and if we want it to operate only on delta, we need a select chop. Let's insert it here, and under Channel Names, let's pick Delta. We can use Gamma for something else. I'm going to pick another chop called LFO, which stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. It does what it says on the tin. It gives me a number oscillating between minus 1 and 1. And the type is set to Sign, but we can change that to Other Types. Now this is helpful, but I would like to see this value over time plotted as a curve. And we can do that with a trail chop. Now the different types of curves are a lot more obvious. Now let's say we want gamma to control the frequency of this LFO. We can do that by activating constant, then highlighting gamma and dragging it over frequency. When we drop it, we have three options, and we want to pick chop reference. Now when we change the value of gamma, we also change the frequency. Let's see what happened in the frequency parameter. We replaced the numeric value with an expression that says 
go to the operator called constant one and read the channel called gamma. Now this parameter is dynamic. And this is another very powerful thing about Touch Designer. Any of these parameters here can be set to the value of anything else in the network. Everything can be dynamic. Right, now let's look at some other chops. Uh, let's say we want to create a different type of oscillator where we can control the curve in a bit more detail. For that, we can use a pattern chop. Now we have a few more parameters to control the curve, uh, such as taper. We can pick a value and change only the left side of the curve. And this gives me an opportunity to talk about something else, which is the value ladder. We can convert any numerical parameter into a slider by clicking and holding the middle mouse button. Then we pick a power of 10 and drag left to right to experiment with values. Let's say we want the value of delta now to oscillate according to this curve we just created. We can do that with a lookup chop. The first input is the index and the second input is the lookup table. Now, as the value of delta changes, it oscillates between around minus two and plus four. If we want to keep that oscillation, but change the range to something else, we can use the, a math chop. And under the range tab, we change from minus two and plus four to let's say zero and five. And we can use this channel to drive something else. And we're going to do that later. But first, let's look at another topic involving chops, and that is audio. We start with an audio file in chop. It loads a default track, and we can see the audio data of both the right and left channels plotted over time. We can work with them just like any other channel. For example, we can drop a math chop and combine them together to create a mono output. This is the signal in the time domain. If we want to see it plotted in the frequency domain, we can drop an audio spectrum chop. And if we want to extract a single value averaging these frequencies, we can use an analyze chop. I hope this shows how practical and how powerful these operators are. Things are quite neatly encapsulated and quite easy to follow if you look at them node by node. And if we need to skip a node, we can click on the bypass flag on the left hand side of the operator. In this case, we're skipping the chop that is combining both channels, so we see the spectrum of both of them and also their average values. Again, there is a lot more to chops than this, but it's time to move to the next family of operators. And this time we're going to look into TOPS, which stands for Texture Operators. This is where we find our pixels, images, videos, fragment shaders, blend modes, etc. We're going to start by loading an image in with the movie file in TOPS. If your preview is showing a banana, don't worry, that is the default one. I just prefer tomatoes. We're going to replace that anyway. So on the file, click on the cross icon and let's pick butterfly six. We have a bunch of interesting operators to play with. Perhaps an easy pick would be the edge top, which performs an edge detection on the image and creates these outlines. Let's say we want the edge detection to happen only on these purple patches. We can do that with an RGB key. We need to adjust the minimum value of blue and also the maximum value of red. Now say we want to see these outlines in their original colors. For that, we can use an inside top. And the hint tells us that the alpha of input 2 is used to determine what parts of the input 1 are visible. 
So we branch out of the original image for input one and use the edge as input two. Let's see what else we can do. I think I can't talk about tops without covering feedback loops. The principle is this. We change an image over time and then blend its current frame with its previous frame, creating a feedback loop. We can start by copy and pasting movie file in one, and then we change the image to butterfly five. And from there, we branch out twice. First with a feedback top, and then with a composite top. And then we drag the composite over feedback to determine that this is the previous frame we want to read from. Now, before we blend them together, let's change them a bit. We can insert a transform top and change the scale to 0 0.9. We can also change the opacity with a level top. And let's say we can also set it to 0 0.9. Now we can composite them together, and under the operation parameter, we have all sorts of interesting blend modes. The one we're after now is maximum. We saw the animation happening once, but it would be good to see it over time. And we can go back to our chops and pick that oscillating value we created earlier. Let's change the range to something that makes more sense, like 0 0.85 and 1.05. Now we can go to the transform top and then drag our channel and drop it as a reference over scale. And this is the effect it creates. And we can keep adding more effects to this chain. You might remember from the beginning of the video when we closed the menu from the left hand side. That was the palette. Let's open it again now. The palette is a collection of useful components that ship with Touch Designer. One that we could use in our effect is under image filters and it's called RGBA delay. So just click on it and drag it to the network editor. Now we get something like a VHS version of our feedback loop. We can also add some background color to our scene. And there are several ways of doing that. One that I like is with the transform top. Pick a color, change alpha to 1, and toggle comp over background color. Right, that's enough about tops. Let's move on to the next family of operators. And this time I want to go all the way back to the beginning of the network, just before our stops. And we're going to talk about that, which are data operators. And this is where we find tables and text, including Python scripts. And we're going to start with a keyboard in. This will log keyboard inputs. And we can see that it comes with an extra box, which is essentially another text that docked to the main keyboard in that. And it shows a little Python script with functions which are called every time there's a new keyboard event. We could use this to change the 3D text we created earlier. But instead of dragging and dropping a dynamic parameter, we're going to write the expression directly in this dot. Let's have a quick look at that stop. It's called text1, and it has a parameter called text, where the parameter name is with a lowercase d. Now we can go back to our callback dot, activate it, and we can type a quick expression. op text one dot par dot text equals to character, which is passed into this function. Now if we go back to the text sop and type something on the keyboard, we can see the text is now dynamic. I won't talk about that for too long, but let me show you at least one more, and that is the sort dot. 
as I press new keys, we can see the data getting sorted and we can change the order to alphabetical, which will include the first row with the titles, but we can toggle preserve first to keep them at the top. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is going to cover both comps and mats, and that is a standard rendering setup. If you've worked with 3D before, you're probably familiar with materials and cameras and lights. We're going to start with the surface. So I'm going to go to the SOP tab and pick a select SOP. And we can select a SOP that already exists in our network, like the Twist SOP. Now we link this surface to a geometry comp. And then we also add a camera comp and a light comp. And finally, we add a render top, which is going to look at this geometry through this camera, illuminated by this light, and convert that into pixels. After the render top, we can drop an alt top to indicate that this is the output of our network. And we can also toggle the display flag to view it as a backdrop. Now, the colors and the material of this geometry are default values set by Touch Designer, but we can change that. And this brings us to the last family of operators called MAT, which stands for Material Operators. We're going to pick a fog mat. Then we need to drag it on top of the geometry and select parameter material. Now we can change the diffuse color to whatever we like, or we can even provide a color map using a top that we created earlier. So let's go back to our butterfly and connect a null to indicate the end of that chain. and give it a name like RGB. Then we can go back to our material, change the diffuse back to white, and under color map type RGB. The UV coordinates are a bit off, but we can fix that by inserting a texture salt. Right, so this was my overview. I hope I was able to show you the potential of Touch Designer for exploring ideas and creating great projects. Obviously, the best way to learn more is to start playing with it and experimenting. But if you want to find more content, where to go from here? I could recommend a video by Ben Voigt, who is from Derivative called Introduction to Touch Designer. It is four hours long, and I think it was recorded at a workshop, so it has a different pace, but he covers things in a lot more detail, so if you have the time, I definitely recommend watching it. And I would also like to point you to William's YouTube channel. He has dozens of Touch Designer tutorials, which are very approachable, and they can inspire you with ideas to create your own projects. So this is it from me. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, until the next video.